Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we Hello. can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things. Pedro. <laughs> we felt, I, I was not paying Pedro attention, as is tradition. What did you do? What will I go I just made a silly face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I probably didn't even notice that. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, everyone. If this was uh, Saturday, i tell you something right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'd have competition if this was Saturday. Let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's always good for a screenshot on Saturday. I'm like, oh, there he is. Okay, he's doing that. All right. Clip, clip. Hey, everyone. I'm Ben. That's Jill. That's Pedro mm -hmm. watching his live here at home. And uh, we're going to talk about some Linux stuff because that's what we do. Just some yeah. weird things that we find. Not always weird, but things that mm -hmm. we find a little bit interesting. Fair warning. We laugh a little bit, try to have some fun. So if you're looking for a show to punch you to sleep, um, Pedro streams on Tuesdays. No. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that is a much better alternative, yes. <laughs> Just zen out while you walk around and listen to Pedro give you the backstory and lore of uh, Dark Souls. Yep. Yeah. It, it could be <laughs> slightly cathartic if you get issues. That's brilliant. Um, <laughs> what's going on, everyone? I know I finally, I've had it since uh, Monday. A switch for audio. Um, yeah, I have that. Uh, here, take a look. Boop. There it is. That, nice. That's doing our audio stuff right now. It's uh, one in the middle. The smart cloud switch CSS. It's a piece of kit. It's handling um, our NetJack audio, and it's got two 10 gig links on it between the main boxes. Just kind of playing around with it. Um, relatively inexpensive for a switch with um, 10 gig. At 140 bucks, you can get them on eBay mm -hmm. for about 90. And uh, hopefully, it's going to let us do a little more expanding. But stay tuned for that. Also, playing around with some stuff with the audio. The way I have it routed, I think I have a problem sorted. And I hopefully haven't introduced anything new and exciting into that. So, what's up, Joe? Aww. So I had fun on Jupiter Broadcasting's Linux Unplugged yesterday again, uh, talking about my favorite lightweight Linux distros. They did a, a lightweight Linux distro challenge, and it was a lot of fun. So go uh, listen to that. And I'm also looking forward to Jordan's stream tomorrow, where we will be facing the final boss in Serious Sam 2. So come join nice. us if you'd like. <laughs> I can't believe we've gotten through it this quickly. <laughs> there's something I saw, um, I think yesterday on our Linux, there's a new beta of Haiku. Ah, yes. yeah. I heard of that. Oh, you did? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I haven't, it's, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's right here. <laughs> That's kind of neat, man. Uh, I was looking at the screenshots and the, um, I guess the developer, a developer who was working on it was in the comments on Reddit and he was going through and was like, yeah, that does. And I was like, oh, I remember those days. Uh, uh -huh. Nothing really worked. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. They, they had a great uh, <laughs> screenshot of a five button mouse configuration, which was just a standard mouse with oh, like, five yeah. buttons on the front. <laughs> <laughs> five clickies. I was like, oh, that'd be neat. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we're working on things. All right. Uh, what's new with you, Pedro? I genuinely broke um, a Firefox, uh, mm -hmm. the F Firefox's ability to refresh a tab. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but because I, I keep my pine book uh, tracking thing open and every, <laughs> every now and then during the day, I go there and I refresh. See where it's at. It finally left China. So that, that's a positive. Hey. But yeah, um, at one point today, I went to refresh it and it didn't. <laughs> and then no. the whole tab froze. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> that'll teach me. <laughs> I hadn't had that happen in Firefox since, you know, the old, Years old ago, days huh? when Firefox was a bloated mess, to say yeah. the least. Well, it also had the added benefit of not being per process on tab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was just that tab. I could, I just closed that tab and it went away and the rest of it was still fine. It's like, all right, okay. I think nice. that was like one of the most dangerous design decisions is a allowing a browser to remember all of your tabs because 
people use that incorrectly. They're like, oh, look, that's my bookmarks. <laughs> and yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So what do we want to... Oh, yeah. Katie, uh, Pedro's yes. favorite. You discovered uh, rainbow text, <laughs> I believe. Uh-huh. Rainbow text? <laughs> you know what I I'm talking issues. about when you get your anti-aliasing and it's off just enough to be like, you know, yes. I, I don't necessarily <laughs> want RGB in my text. It wasn't, you know, rainbowy. It was just blurry. Mm. It was mm. very, very blurry. But yeah, that was a bit of a side effect of Plasma 519, which dropped uh, early yesterday. Or was it today? Let's see, the 9th. Yes, it was yesterday. Okay. I'm not crazy yet. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, they have a bunch of uh, new things, but I'll, I'll, I'm will i actually going to let Jill, since she went through all the tr trouble of collating everything in the show notes. So go ahead, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, this release, it just fixes a lot of paper cuts, and there are lots of little touches that make that make the desktop more visually appealing. And uh, uh, one is there is a com completely new collection of photographic avatars to choose from when setting up your user. Consistor it's header a... area. Has that been a problem? Yeah. 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 Especially between <laughs> GTK and QT apps. <laughs> yeah, that's been an issue. And uh, the panel spacer, the invisible element that helps place components on the panel now can now automatically center widgets, which is much cleaner, much better that way. And Plasma 5.19 also incorporates a consistent design and header area for system tray applets as well as notifications. And uh, that is actually a big deal. <laughs> that was a, a big change. And uh, GTK3 apps immediately apply a newly selected color scheme. And GTK2 apps no longer have broken colors. That's been an issue. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for this. Increasing the default fixed font with font size from 9 to 10, I making all the text. I can finally be sushi. <laughs> yeah, yes. sushi. Oh, yes, you can. So you can now be the text... sushi. You can be a DualShock 4. Uh, I guess which one I'm using. <laughs> yeah. <Zebra>. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, but, yeah, I was using um, Sunflower for a while. <laughs> so yeah, but, but Pedro had, had issues with the text. <laughs> yeah, the supposed improvements uh, for the fonts. Yeah, they uh, caused the... Because I had the system set to... I think it's the default for uh, KDE Neon. It's, it just uses Noto Sans. That, that, that was the font that I had. You know, they're really and missing out an opportunity, Pedro, because they have Chunk. It could be Chunky. Yes. <laughs> that would be a little too close to conky, so... <laughs> ah, yes. But, yeah. The, um, so I went through all the options because when I rebooted into 519, uh, all, everything was blurry. Like, the, the... Hmm. Icons on the desktop, the legend below them, where the name of the application is, Everything blur. It's like, nope, can't have that. So the only thing that actually fixed it was um, changing the font altogether. And then it's like, oh, it's back to being crisp again. Mm. Was that so hard? But yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose I um, should have, you know, uh, already changed the uh, font back to Droid Sans because I like Droid Sans. So yeah. uh, this kind of expedited the whole process along. <laughs> So you like it? You're still going to keep it? You haven't uninstalled it? Oh yeah, no. Mm -hmm. the, the little annoyances that I have are slowly being eroded away. Now, if I can keep uh, KWIN compositing on without it crashing whenever I exit a game, mm. we'll have a good desktop finally. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, the, and the wallpaper is really pretty too. I love the wallpaper on it. <laughs> oh default. yeah, the new default wallpaper actually looks pretty nice. And the 518 mm -hmm. one also looked pretty good. Yeah. Cool. So, mm -hmm. I, I'm glad it's working for you, man. You, you've you stuck with it. Um, I'm sure like a lot of people out of there, I didn't survive the 4.0 release. <laughs> no one survived the 4.0 release. No. It wasn't until 4.9 came out that it was usable again. <laughs> the... Well, not to rehash that, a lot of us, like I was Katie Zealot. KDE's best, period. Be quiet, everyone. Use KDE. Um, 
right up to 4.0, man. And I think a lot of users were like, what? What's this nightmare? Um, yeah, no, for yeah. the OG 4.0 was bad. I think it would have helped out a lot more. I mean, not to rehash history, if they would have called it like 3.99. <laughs> yeah, say it's an alpha, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Speaking of rehash. Uh, yes, <laughs> that thing here we, we talked go. about last week. Yeah, let's bring it back. Let's talk about it again. Uh, um, Ubuntu explains its position about the Chromium Snap. Canonical would welcome the chance to talk with Linux Mint about their issues with Snap, which they didn't really have an issue with Snap. They're just like, we're not going to ship it with it being enabled anymore, which, you know, I read through this and... Uh, representative has replied to which they say you know these users have chosen to install snaps based on reasons outlined many reasons snapcraft store we would welcome linux mint to engage with us and our community to discuss such topics as we do with other distributions and work together going forward uh that's an interesting way of saying that's an open door I'm like yeah you, you can tell us why you decided that okay that's neat <laughs> you okay. can let us know what your grievances are but that's not going to make a difference yeah yeah <laughs> you and know, um it... they continued on to say it's like oh yeah. regarding chromium decision was made mm -hmm. to ship the snap in 1910 uh, prior to that, we communicated this and the reasons uh, in a blog post. The status of Chromium remains the same in 2004. It's, yes, it's still bad. Jill? Yeah. Yeah. We, well, you know, l you know, like we've talked about here on Help Top Video, you understand why there is a Chromium snap. I, I understand that, that it makes it easier to support Chromium updates across the Ubuntu LTSs and all the releases. In between, it's just using a dev file to install Snap. It's not cool to me, you know. Just just tell people to go to the Snap store instead of making it part of the the dev that launches the. Snap. They've made it, it easier. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just they, they've me. made it easier by replicating uh, <laughs> spyware. It's a, yeah. it's effectively a <laughs> it Trojan kind of. that installs. Um, <laughs> it it installs Snap. And then installs yeah. the snap for Chromium. It is a Trojan. I, no, I'm <laughs> pretty sure. It, I'm Trojan. pretty sure it gives you like, hey, I'm about to install snap. <laughs> Good one, Pedro. <laughs> does it or does it not, Pedro? <laughs> yes. It doesn't give you a notification that it's going to install snap. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, you, when you do apt install something, if it has dependencies, if it's just the one application, it'll install it and it won't ask for, for <laughs> confirmation. But if it yeah. has dependencies, like in this case, everything is a dependency because it's not actually installing the native Chromium, uh -huh. it will go, these are the packages that are going to be installed. And it says snap the, um, the snap for okay. so and everything else. When was the last time you installed a Trojan that uh, said, hey, the, 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 I'm about to install, okay? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I'm just saying you got a really a process. You got a poop analogy. You got a poop analogy. That is not. It fair. wasn't a poop analogy. Everyone met, got exactly what I meant. You're just being pedantic, Fen. Uh, I'm just saying what it is versus like, hey, yeah, yes, that that that's what pedantry is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aww. So but yeah, yeah the. <laughs> The um, thing here is like, it's Mint and it's Linux Mint, you know, one of the longest running uh, Ubuntu based distros and they're basically going, yeah, Canonical's doing that. We're not. Kind of mm -hmm. like when, you know, Gnome 3 came out and Canonical went, we're going to go with Unity yes. and Mint's going, no, we're not. Cinnamon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Men rolled out cinnamon. How's cinnamon doing? Is that still a thing? People are still. Oh yes. Yeah. It, there's yeah, even it, an official spin for Ubuntu with cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Good to see, man. Uh, you know, beautiful thing about Linux is you can pick and choose what you want to do. There's no lock. Mm -hmm. Oh you know, yes. If you want to run, <laughs> you know, there's something to be said. Even if you want to run like the latest 2004, you can decanonical your system, which is something I you know we've all talked about at some point. And, you know, 
to Pedro's point, the only problem I have with snaps is something I might have mentioned. I was using Authy to keep track of, you know, my password manager, you know, just across tablets, PCs, mm. and they used to have a Chrome, not an exit Chrome app. And Chrome's yeah. like, we don't do apps anymore. And so they're like, oh, we can't do this anymore. That sucks. But we have a Linux desktop client. It's like, that's fantastic. All right, I'll go download that. It's only available to Snap. Uh, uh. <laughs> not going to set Snap up for one application. This is not going to happen. I sent them an email. I'm like, uh, get back to me. And I've just moved on to something else. But uh, yeah, it's just not a huge fantasy in that. If a product's good, people are going to use it. And we were talking about the pre pre, well, just yeah. the regular pre shows and that. Hey, you know, that's their house. They get to do what they want to do. And, you know, of course, they're going to be like, yo, why don't you use this? Which I get. Now, mm. if they ever, oh, one other sweet little thing. Come over to Debbie and Kids. This is where the party originally started. You know how I install Chromium? <laughs> yeah, apt install apt Chromium. <laughs> well, Chromium browser. If you just do apt install yeah. Chromium, it installs Chromium BSU, the video game. Pedro, you're being pedantic. Yes, yes I am. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while to get back to that one, but I got there. Um, Speaking of Chromium, man. Yes. Uh, I wanted to give this a little bit of a shout out. This is ungoogled Chromium. Yay. And, mm -hmm. well, you know, if you're on Debian, you're like, I'm just going to run Chromium anyway, because you can't run this side by side with it. Well, I guess you could if you got fancy with the cheese whiz, but most people are not. <laughs> what is it? Lightweight approach to removing Google Web Services. It, it's Chromium by a different name. I'm sure there's some other bits and bobs and all that, but... No, it's Pedro, a drop-in replacement. <laughs> Pedro, what advantage does this have over regular Chromium? I can think of one big one. Um, <laughs> uh, one big one. <laughs> de depending on how you look at it, uh, it's... Um, well, you don't have the Google stuff. Uh, you don't have the telemetry. You don't have the... Uh, constant nagging to sign in to your Google account. You don't have, you know, Chrome always listening to your microphone if it's so much as, oh, I don't know, plugged in. <laughs> Chrome is very polite because it's like, okay, Google, and uh, Google's like, I'm sorry, your mic's off. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> what was that? I was like, wait a minute. It's like, did you, did huh? you ask for me? I'm not sure. <laughs> so cut your mic on so I can hear you. Um, but yeah, that can also be a bit of a disadvantage. No, Ben, I'm going to say the big bit. advantage mm -hmm. for this, the main one, it's available everywhere, maybe. Exactly. Boy, it's there. <laughs> I mean, it's available in the Arch, Android, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, Gentoo, Gnunic, GUX, all right, whatever, Mac OS, Nginx, why not? Because that's the thing. Um, you can just put a repo in, right, Pedro? I mean, they you get, can. No. Um, yeah. They're hosting, uh, an, uh, they have an OBS, not that one, uh, repo, and the uh, Susie, Susie Open, build. open mm -hmm. yeah, open mm -hmm. build system. And you can get uh, Debian Debs or just install the, um, the OBS repo as a system repo, and then you can always get the updates as they come out. Same for Ubuntu. So, yeah. And. I like this one because it includes the 32-bit version of Chromium browser. Yes. If you, like <laughs> me, have, you know, like me and Jill, uh, who have very old uh, laptops uh, and computers running around. Mm -hmm. Running. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yeah, the, it is available, so that, that that was very nice to see. Yes. Cool. All this is going to be in our show notes. Uh, Blender, new LTS, does... LTS oh, with Blender huge. just mean the same thing as like long-term support? Yes, correct. All right. Correct. Okay. And this <laughs> this release uh, is awesome. I had been test testing the beta and it was uh, when this when the LTS got released. It's it's sweet. So, yeah, so the Blender 2.83 LTS has been released with major new features, much faster performance and 1250 bug fixes. Yay! And yes, it is the first official long-term support release for two years of support for Blender projects. And uh, that's huge. That's, that's 
that's also, you know, saying, you know, we are industry standard now and we will support you for several years on, on the big movie projects and commercial projects. So really awesome on Blender. That's nice. <laughs> yes. And there's, oh gosh, there's so many updates. It's powered by OpenXR, um, uh, power, excuse me, uh, powered by OpenXR, Blender now ships with a, the first milestone in VR support, scene inspection. So you can not only use it to, you know, render out uh, to VR Everyone later. Everyone cares about hair simulation <laughs> so much. Oh. Yeah, no, Tress effects yeah. popped into my head just as soon yes. as I saw that coom. <laughs> that, that's is like one of those big things. Uh, the, the only people that I think genuinely care about hair are like 3D art artists. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, okay, it's got hair or it does not have hair. I'm done. <laughs> well, the, the big deal about the VR support is uh, for us content creators creating scenes and making sure that everything's set in its place correctly. It's just another tool you can use I instead of... I've definitely done that many times. Um... <laughs> <laughs> instead of using XYZ in 2D to adjust your scene, now you can do it in VR uh, for those of those that VR works <laughs> for them. So that is awesome. And, uh, you know, Cycles now supports denoising inside the Blender viewport with NVIDIA Optics AI accelerated denoiser, as well as in final renders like we have been talking about. So now you can yep. do it right in the viewport, which is amazing. It, it again, it sets Blender ahead of a lot of the proprietary softwares in, in that area. And there's other new features, including improvements to Grease Pencil 2D animation, Open VDB import, which is big, and a powerful new physics-enabled cloth brush to name a few. It's huge. Go go look at it in the show notes and and download it and give it a spin. It's it's really amazing. It's free. Yes. <laughs> it's free. It's open source. It's Blender as a perfectly reasonably sane individual. I do everything I can to avoid having to do anything in Blender, but at least once a year I have to force myself. And that's always yeah. a very interesting relearning project <laughs> that my brain has become frighteningly efficient at scrubbing all knowledge because I genuinely have to relearn Blender every time I use it. And it's not no. Blender's fault. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw the um I haven't seen like the little short uh film that they did uh with Oh yes. the recent versions of Blender uh but I saw a uh, Blender or someone who retweeted the uh the Blender announcement. I had, they had a little trailer it's like that that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that that looks pretty good. The co the coffee <laughs> From I'm Coffee runner, coffee. It looks like speed runner, but it's yeah, got a really um, neat. Whoops. I, I don't remember the really name either. Story. And, <laughs> you know, from someone who used to run uh, Big Buck Bunny at 1080p to test netbooks back in the day to see if they could play 1080p. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that, 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 that's an improvement. That's a market improvement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big Buck Bunny, that has been reduced to like, yeah, it's just a benchmark thing. Um, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Render it out in 8K and then try to play it. <laughs> Fantastic work. As always, uh, Mozilla is up to something. You know, they kind of pull yeah. back. Um, you know, like, hey, <laughs> maybe we need to focus on our core stuff. But they branched out just a little bit. Yeah. This with, is awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Me thing. Yeah, so Mozilla Fun's Meet Thing, which is a new video conferencing and collaboration platform from the Innovation Lab ERA. And their uh, Meet Thing's goal is to be more secure than existing video conference tools, uh, like Zoom, <laughs> run on a decentralized database engine and leverage peer-to-peer -peer networking like we are using here on Jitsi. So, you know, this is a great way for way for Mozilla to gain name recognition and to bring Zoomers along. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Mozilla, who introduced and spearheaded WebRTC in Firefox 22 back in 2013, you know, this is it's, it's really nice to have this uh, this back in the fold again. And, you know, they've had various uh, WebRTC projects that they have tested, but not quite caught on. And this one ran really well. I actually tested it on mobile and on desktop, and it, it ran really well. And, you know, now Meet Thing uh, and a global pandemic might just be what Mozilla needed to fix web real-time communications 
in its browser. <laughs> Call it yeah, neat. that needs fixing yeah. one more time. <laughs> <laughs> It's the meat thing. What are you talking it's about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 it doesn't make sense that it's me thing. So meat thing makes more sense. <laughs> so I mispronounced it. So I'm going to double down. And you need to re, <laughs> you, you need to rename, rebrand. It makes more sense. Check it out. Here's what I'm going to say about it. We need more WebRTC. It, yes. uh, that's future. That's the way it's going to work. Uh, Microsoft somehow, somehow, a staggering monumental level of incompetence managed to take the dominant platform there was no number two there was there was skype mm -hmm. that was it mm -hmm. there, there were like uh oh, maybe yeah. this other thing can kind of do it was just skype skype was available on everything including linux then microsoft bought it and they've managed to turn that into something that and eh, maybe it's mm -hmm. only available for business. They just mangled that to pieces so bad that a company that doesn't know how to secure you, bro, zoom, comes out, it's coupled together, and it's a <laughs> technical marvel of a train wreck of WebRTC. I've had the experience of attempting to use it once. Uh, good on everyone doing it. Then there's Jitsi. The biggest issue with Jitsi for Mozilla is Jitsi works like poo on Mozilla. Mm -hmm. And they, they've kind of had a standoff of like, well, you need to change this. And it's just like, we work on everything else, bro. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. I mean, honestly, I would kind of like to see more work and development go into Jitsi, but competition's good. And this is free. Yes. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. Uh, Anything to take people away from teams, please. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I will <laughs> expose features, Webex. though. The one thing I don't like to see in every single WebRTC application, give people the options for disabling all the stuff that you're doing for, you know, somebody who's never used, you know, they're on their laptop and noisier, like your echo cancellation, your high-pass noise filters, all the other stuff. Expose that to the client so I don't have to do this quarter mile long url to individually mm -hmm. disable all this stuff hi jitsi um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> then everything will be grand ah uh, okay all right hey check it out i made a thing maybe you're curious you about did. it maybe you're not yes. it doesn't change the fact that i made something this is <laughs> as is tradition if i can't find something i make it and I went looking around, I was like, has anybody made like a little uh, guide for Outdoor 6? Digital Audio Workstation. It's out. Oh, I think we talked about it week before last, maybe last week. And build instructions, because it's not in a bunch of repos right now. This is a really easy thing to do. I walk you through it in about three minutes. Quick and dirty how-to. Piece of cake. Maybe you haven't built anything from source before. I'm not saying this is going to be the best place to start. But if you're on Debian, hey. Monkey see, monkey do. This is how I learned how to do stuff way back in the day, but this is super simple. You can even try before you buy, before doing a system-wide install, and this will get you up and running. Something I do point out in the video, though, even between like Debian 10 and Debian testing, package names change. This is one of the biggest issues that Linux has, is especially with development packages. Could we just standardize? Especially the Debian mm. size. Side yeah. of things. Let's do dev or dev, <laughs> or is it going to be the package name or lib package name? I mean, there's a couple <laughs> of regular tricks that you go before you open Synaptic. You're like, all right, what is this? Thing? Yeah. Um, yes. That, I, I just skipped this, to that step now because it's like, okay, I need to figure out the dependencies on this. Synaptic. Oh, that's the one. I, I will typically do a, co <laughs> a copy pasta from the terminal for that first shot. I'm like, eh, no. All right. But this will get Outdoor <laughs> up and running for you. It's kind of brilliant. It's easy to do. Uh, what else do I need to say about this? Oh, right. Oh, right, right, right. I've already had a comment. And... A very and, positive comment. Oh, there's, oh, there is a comment down there. Now I'm talking about on YouTube. <laughs> 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 this is great. This is great. Um, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I just thought you should know. And it was a link to um, the AUR. So, did did you not put Debian in the title of the mm -hmm. video? But you know, he's, he's, hey, hey, by the way, 
by the way. Arch? I run Arch. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a way to say it without saying it. And, you know, of course, naturally, I, I, your, your sweet, friendly neighborhood, Vin, I just wrote back. You know, and I mean, I did, man, 100%. I was like, uh, that's neat. That's what I said. I was like, that's neat. However, this guide is made for more advanced users. (laughs) 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 To which I've not received a reply. (laughs) Uh, He's got to find a way to tie that back in somehow. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, it's not my problem to build something from the source, kiddo. All right. That's great. <laughs> but now, one. We did actually have a comment uh, on LinuxGameCast.com. Doesn't happen all the time, but I got an email earlier today. It's like, what? what? The- oh, all right. <laughs> Hang on. Do we? Have- yeah. Yeah. What's it say? Dude, oh. thanks. This video is really awesome. This video should have one million of likes. Mm. Great channel and blog. Big fan here. Is that a spam bot? You know, um, I did a copy and paste to check that, and it wasn't. All right. Okay. <laughs> also, this okay, guy learned nice. English from the same place I did. Um, <laughs> quite possible. Yes. <laughs> um, docking. Mm. Yes. Do not summon the Orn. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> He's on Mastodon. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, but no, this is Next Doc. The Next Doc Touch. You may have heard of the Next Doc in the past. It was basically a teeny tiny little foldable battery bank with a screen attached to it that you plugged your phone or literally anything else that had an HDMI out. Uh, to it and you would have a laptop you could turn your phone into a laptop and this well this is the next iteration this is the next doc touch it comes with a touch screen and uh, it comes with that uh, little magnetic side mount so you can uh, have your phone up on the screen and that's some funky music Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) and um, yeah it's it is effectively um, a big battery bank, a 60 watt hour battery bank that gives you a second display. And it works with your phone over USB Type C, over HDMI, or uh, there's another connector there for something. What kind uh, of USB Type C? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think it's 3.1, but I may be wrong. Is it the kind um, we just keep on uh, plugging in different cables until it does the right thing? Yeah, it's like, where's the cable? Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, you're not. Oh, this is not a data cable. Oh, no, this is the one that only does charging on Tuesdays. Yeah, um, it's like, oh, this is a really good cable. I can't use this. Uh, oh, this is the one that's just too. <laughs> that little bit too short. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Actually, that's one of the advantages of the little magnetic mount is that you can have uh, the phone up so you could effectively have two screens, one with your phone and the one on the uh, the next dock itself. I got some and charging this... cables that are probably stout enough to hold up a mobile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have one of those too. <laughs> um, but the same reason I want this, um, at, well, at the same time, I want this, but the reason I don't want this is because, you know, my main gripe with the original Next Doc is still very much there. It's just $250 Aww. for a battery yeah. bank and a screen. Mm. Yeah, and, you know, I like the idea of using this as a second monitor and one that doesn't have to be plugged in, but is battery powered instead. That's actually really, really cool. Um, And I love this project, but yeah, like Pedro was saying, at that price, you can buy a Pinebook around $100 with a webcam and just hook up a cheap 7-inch or bigger touchscreen to it. Of course, it's not as nice as the one one on the next dock, but it's still, that that would do, (laughs) and it's cheaper. But I love where this project is going, and it has lots of potential, definitely. I look at this, and (laughs) that... What can I say about it? I, I fear I have a device like this around the house. You mm-hmm. know, it has a battery, it has a touch screen, and when I open the case, it's got a keyboard on the underside of the case. It's it's Do you uh, have a Chromebook? No, it's a, it's a tablet. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You have some weird tablets. I don't need to open my tablet. <laughs> well, the one has the keyboard case on it, and I open it, and the keyboard's there. <laughs> oh, so it is a Chromebook. Okay. <laughs> They make 10 inch Chromebooks. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little win. Actually, can I get mine out? I don't know. That's way too thick. Well, the screen is 10 inches. Um, <laughs> it's also charged. The... Yes, it is. <laughs> I keep my laptops in good repair. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, if you're going to keep holding them up in front of cameras, I'm still going to give you opportunities to show it because statistically you're going to drop one at some point. <laughs> the first Samsung Chromebook. <laughs> so, oh, nice. It's... I don't have my Triple E anymore. Otherwise, I'd show that too. <laughs> <laughs> now Vin goes. <laughs> We're taking turns. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, uh, <laughs> this, this is, uh, more power to the team doing it. I like the, the uh, touch screen, but the second you involve like USB-C cables and things that stick on back, that's just glued you that stuff. It's going to break off. Those are pieces you're not going to be able to find. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's all nice, but something hanging off the side, somebody's going to rip that off. Somebody's going to walk <laughs> by that. If you have a toddler, you can't buy that. If you have a cat, it's probably not a good idea. Yeah. Mm. Although um, the cat will probably just lie down on the uh, on the keyboard part of the next <laughs> stock. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, the human puts his hands here. All right, so if I lay here, he might put his hands on my belly. <laughs> well, I have two kitties, and I successfully keep them out of my computer room. <laughs> so they're not Congratulations lying. Congratulations <laughs> on being able to shut a door. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's well, the same method you use to keep Steve out? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work with Steve. <laughs> they have the roughly the same success ratio of getting the door open, though. So, <laughs> hey, beautiful people! If you like what we do and you want to support our nonsense, our craziness, you can head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We got a Patreon page. That's the best way to do it. We put out a lot of content and a lot of bonus stuff. We got a support button with Patreon Leap or Pay. We got merch. We got shirts. We got cups. We, we don't have fanny packs yet. I still got to do that. Oh, PayPal, Wish Zones, <laughs> Bitcoins. If uh, you throw anything on the studio, Wish Zone, you end up like Aldius, who picked up a UPS for us. It's APC. It's in the rack. Another seven minutes of battery backup time. And Pedro and Jill. Jordan, they all have. They, <laughs> you can just go creep on the stuff they have on their Amazon wish list. That's all I do. I Absolutely. Like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or you can buy do like Aldius and buy something that was effectively a joke item, and now I'm wearing them all the time because they're really comfy. Yes. <laughs> I could make something up that would be me. really entertaining. But <laughs> what would Aldius get you? <laughs> <laughs> Yoga pants. <laughs> oh right, right. How soon we forget. Because we've not seen them <laughs> in proper lighting. Uh, yeah, yes. they're, they're black. <laughs> Let's just say Twitch probably wouldn't be okay with how revealing they are. I don't know. I was working on a dance you could do. <laughs> <laughs> probably wouldn't be, you know, very... Um, there wouldn't be a whole lot of movement because they're tight. These uh, are, you know... Yoga pants. I can add some extra steps. I'm cool. Jill. Yeah. We did mention Patreon. Patreon's a great yes. way to do it. We've been on Patreon since almost not day one. We gave it about a year. It's like, oh, that's cool. Uh, we got a bunch of extra stuff on there. Just like a little bit of bonus stuff. If you want to help us out, we got preview super shows. And we got access, early access to all the stuff we do, up to and including. You get to hop in our super secret Discord that no one knows about except yes. like the hundred people that are in there. And um, audio only invites game streams. Bunch of bunch of neat stuff. Yeah. Uh, we we try to like oversell it it's for like a buck yeah. a week, four quarters if you can spare. Joe, we got a new Patreon. Yes, we yes, we do. Um, their name is Iris One Twenty One. Mm. So thank you uh, so much for your patronage. And we also got a donation via PayPal by Captain Zero. Um, that was on our our Twitch notification earlier. 
So that was really cool, too. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting us and all this crazy business we do. It's been awesome and a wild ride. <laughs> oh, come on, Jill. You can drop the pretense. You, at this point, everyone knows that the only reason people watch is because Jill. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> hey, man. Aww. Just because people like train wrecks, don't shame them. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Jill's got all of the charisma and everyone goes, Ah, oh, Jill, she's so awesome. And that laughter is contagious. Well. Like, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there too. <laughs> yeah. You're the giggly gentlemen. death after all, Pedro. <laughs> I guess I'm just not we death. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Into a slice of pie. What do we have this week? We have a cyber pie. Yeah, so it's a cyber deck. It's another Raspberry Pi project that uh, turned the uh, Raspberry Pi into a cyber deck. And it's, uh, thank you, Exalty, once again. Uh, Exalty is determined to uh, be the number one. But <laughs> this one, um, I found it on Hackaday. And um, much like you, Ven, you asked a very, very poignant question. It's like, cyber decks, is that a thing? Well, oh, my yeah. first thought was like, <laughs> it's a good thing that we're not talking about this in New Zealand. <laughs> Yes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to emphasize that it's an E, not an I. Yeah. But yeah, the I did a Google search. It's like, oh, oh, this is uh -huh. a thing. This is a thing because if you look at the image search for Cyberdeck, it's every single Amazing. one is different, and every single one was built from either a Raspberry Pi or an old laptop, like the bottom of the laptop, or um, it's just an actual desktop keyboard with a screen um, bolted onto it. Yeah, no, th this is a thing. And this particular model, um, it uses one of those cheap uh, keyboards that you can get off of uh, eBay. Mm -hmm. I was gonna... Yeah, I love to the draw. homebrew. <laughs> there <laughs> <Right> we go. <laughs> <laughs> one of these. Uh, you basically strap a Raspberry Pi with a, one of those teeny tiny little touch screens that they have. Um, and you use one of these. Yes. Uh, you put a bigger battery because the battery on this one, it's one of those old uh, Nokia phone batteries. <laughs> is that a Nokia or is so, that a JCL? Let's see. It's doesn't even specify Show brand. Me <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> it's the same one that my uh, old Nokia's used to have. It's just those three pins. Yeah. And yeah, it's um, they have a working computer with a Raspberry Pi Zero and one of these things. And you could, without you know, adding too much extra girth to the uh, the screen bit, you could easily. Uh, get a Raspberry Pi 4 in there with, I don't know, maybe some Vulcan? Mm. Chill? Mm. I don't know, man. Yeah. One oh, of the yeah, things that's... I'm thinking about is... <laughs> that's coming. Looking at that. I'm like, okay, Cyberpunk. But if you don't have a mini CRT on it, what's the point? Oh. <laughs> but I, I mean, do. I've got a chumby the... right there. <laughs> that, 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 that's kind of an early cyber deck right there. <laughs> My chumby with a little CRT screen on it, little computer. <laughs> Does it make that uh, really annoying? Um... It has a little buzz too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that buzzing sound typical yeah, of just... teeny tiny CRTs. <laughs> yeah, it, this one's it's better than most. It, the the first one was definitely better than the second one when it came to that. The noise, the my second chubby was a little louder. <laughs> but all these little homebrew computers, I just I just love them all and I want to collect them all. <laughs> so, Cuz they're so unique and fun and you know Building a system that's off the grid, you know, it's so sci-fi and so Matrix. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Yay. What do we got So, next? yeah, so uh, we have uh, Vulcan Pie. And yes, like we've <laughs> talked about here on LWW the last few months, 
Vulkan 1.0 API support is coming to the Raspberry Pi 4. And here's a major update with some demo renders that look beautiful. So last January, the team rendered a colored triangle using part of the Vulkan 1.0 API, but now they're using the Kronos Conformist test suite to pass over 70,000 tests. And the, the renders... That's significant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the renders look absolutely beautiful. You know, they have a lot of work. The Raspberry Pi Foundation has a lot of work ahead of, the, ahead of them before they can use the driver for something as demanding as a video game or Blender render or use for digital signage. But lots of progress is being made in just a few months. And in the next couple of months, they intend to provide basic support for the Vulkan 1.0 feature set and then move on to CTS conformance, which is really awesome. I think we're going to get this Vulkan driver on the Raspberry Pi sooner than we think. A lot of progress. Awesome. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, the the screenshots that they have in the article, um, those mm -hmm. Vulkan tests, if you mm -hmm. were, you know, a Linux user back when Vulkan first came out and everyone's going like, oh, I wonder if my GPU can do the Vulkans. Uh, yes. You probably found yourself mm -hmm. in Sasha Willem's um, GitHub downloading and building mm -hmm. uh, demos and attempting to run them yourself. And to see the Raspberry Pi 4 run a bunch of the tests that, you know, my, um, what was it? GTX 970 at mm -hmm. the time the could not principle? run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I attempt to start them. It's like, oh, it's not complete yet. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, no, that, that is amazing. And more Vulcan support means, uh, better performance for the graphical stuff, especially on the Raspberry Pi, where every bit of performance comes at a bit of a premium. Yeah. And proper Vulcan-based hardware acceleration. Please, yes. God, already. Yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> That'll make yes. Waylon a little more, a little more. <laughs> yes. It'll make Ray Wayland run a little better. <laughs> yeah. So, before we get out of here, we need to check in, see if anybody's like, yo, you got something right, you got something wrong. How'd they do that? What what Apple. mysterious moon incantation <laughs> did they use? Well, you can uh, throw rocks at our heads in Morse code and see if we can uh, decode the message before we pass out. Have but you ever had I'd anyone appreciate throw a you rock at your head that. before Pedro. <laughs> One. Okay. <laughs> rocks, tree branches. I've had a lot of stuff thrown at my head. How long years. have you guys been together? <laughs> 10 years ish. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's um, the best way to do it is to go to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button and you make sure to pick LWDW as a show that you're sending your message to. Fill out the form and yeah, let us know if you're. Um, if you found something that we didn't cover, or if you found a bit more information that you think we should know, or as Ven said, if we got something right, if we got something wrong. You can shout at us. <laughs> we don't mind. I like it. <laughs> this little bit comes from Vatan. Nin. Maybe we'll about that. <laughs> oh, shirt. Hello. Thanks for all the diamond content you guys put on. Watch the LWDW show, and Vin made Pedro and Jill laugh a lot. It's a low bar, let's be honest. <laughs> um, bringing We're such positive used. vibes <laughs> throughout. Hyphenated throughout, man. Rocking it. I like it. Um, the episode. Laughed like mad myself, too. Happy mm -hmm. smiley face. Uh, would like a Vin shirt just to support. Uh, greetings from Finland. Aww. Well, there you go, Vin. There's someone out there who wants your face on a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but that's you got, tell. you know... Uh, myself and Jordan as well. It's, it's just wants you. You clearly. notice if you look at the, I'm the only one in our <laughs> shot that's allowed to have a neck. Yeah, I have a neck. Because <laughs> we're talking about a shirt, and these two think I'm talking about <laughs> their shots right now for some reason. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's not Saturday. I can't <laughs> give you an answer to that one. He doesn't know how to tango clean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, everyone. You're, hey, man, uh, thanks for sending in the note. I'm glad you enjoy the show. Uh, again, yes. we try to have a little bit of fun. We can play around a little bit, you know, because, listen, there's no shortage of them today. We're talking about, that's great. I just can't listen to stuff like that when I'm trying to drive or operate heavy machinery, and I'm kind of heavy machinery. So, on that last little bit, let's roll some credits, thank the people, Aww. and get out of here. Yay. Thanks oh, again yeah. for Tannen for their wonderful feedback. <laughs> that was awesome. And to Iris121, our new patron, and to Captain Zero for his PayPal donation. <laughs> Yay, Pedro! Sorry, Captain Zero, you <laughs> got a too. PayPal donation. It wasn't Patreon. <laughs> Uh, it's not pledged, so I think it was it Patreon, pledged. but yeah, I don't it was know. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Captain Zero, for the. Uh, oh, it wasn't PayPal. It was Patreon okay. monies. <laughs> <sighs> Seriously, all of you producers, we love you executive all. producers, and um, hey, the switch didn't explode. Our crazy, crazy advisor. <laughs> Good on you, Captain Switchy. Aww. Yay, we love you. Man, those credits are just gonna hang around. Go away. Yeah, <laughs> they're keep going and going and going. <laughs> you just praised the Switch. Bye, everyone. <laughs> I praised the Switch hard. <laughs> there we go. <laughs>